Hello, my name is Bob Shaver, and the purpose of this video is to show how one can have a very lightweight pack, uh, and it's very budget conscious. For those who are trying to get into just lighter packs in general, or if you're starting out and you want to know what things to buy and what things not to buy, if you bought this stuff, you wouldn't be too unhappy. Um, <clears throat> so when we're talking about a lightweight pack, we're talking about base weight of the, of the whole assemblage here, the base weight of everything except your food, water, and gas, and fuel. Those things are consumable, they change in weight over the course of the trip, but your base weight would be the same for a two-day trip and for a 10-day trip. The number doesn't really matter. What really matters is that we be as light as possible. And uh, if you can be 15 pounds or 20 pounds even, that's better than 30 pounds. And uh, it's far better than the 35 to 40 pounds that we used to carry. And I've had packs of 70, 75 pounds before in a winter or mountaineering situation. And I physically can't do that anymore. And I need all the help I can get. So to, to talk about the, uh, the, the pack weight, we break it into starting with the big three. The big three are the pack, sleeping bag, and tent. And uh, if you can keep those under three pounds, uh, that's good. If you can keep them under two pounds or close to two pounds, that is awesome. You're probably getting into very expensive stuff or not as comfortable of stuff. If you can keep it under uh, less than two pounds, you're really going to have, you might be in the range of ultralight and it might be expensive. Passing the backpack. My backpack for this ultralight, inexpensive setup is a Flash 45. Um, it's, a, it's a great pack. It has substantial shoulder pads and hip pads. And I'd compare it to an ultralight pack any day. This is more robust fabric. It won't rip or fail on you. An ultralight pack could cost twice as much and it can fail on you the first in the first day of, of your trip. This is this pack is just a big empty empty cavity. However, there is a pocket on the back that you can put stuff in like stuff you need access to during the day, like raincoat and uh, snacks and lunch. There are two side pockets where you can put a bottle plus some other stuff. The waist belt has, zip, has a pouch on this side and that pouch is zippered on this side and it has all kinds of attachment points, lashing points and adjusters to uh, take up the slack if it's uh, too, if it's not full enough, if it's too empty. And this pack runs uh, $50. You can get it for $50 if you look for it. Uh, that's probably used, which uh, if a lot of stuff that is sold as used is hardly worn at all. So I, I wouldn't rule out used. It weighs 48 ounces, so that's quite a bit more. It's twice the weight of an ultralight pack, but quite acceptable for uh, durability and comfort. The next of the big three is sleeping bag. And what I've chosen for this uh, budget-minded ultralight or fairly light pack is a Big Agnes Boot Jack 24, meaning it's rated at 24, and but I've had it down to 70 degrees. I, I slept in it on, a, on an air mattress with no tent and got down to 17 degrees. You can get these for 35 for 80 bucks if you look for it carefully and if you're lucky. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind buying it used if it didn't have any rips. The, the down in here will last forever, so you really are just cleaning the grime off of the exterior cover. So a used down sleeping bag is not bad. This weighs 35 ounces. If you couldn't find the Big Agnes boot jack, you could find other kinds of boot jacks like. Big Agnes Boot Jack, 25, 20. You, you kind of want to stay in the mid-20 range for anything that you might find in the 
mountains of the western United States where it gets down to below 20 in the summer. A uh, 30 degree bag is not going to cut it. That's usually pretty cheap. And if you couldn't find the Big Agnes Bootjack 24, you could find other name brands such as Thermarest. They make awesome quilts. I, my favorite sleeping bag right now is a Thermarest quilt. It's awesome. You could also look for Nemo. They make quilts. Kelty, a little bit on, on the cheap side of sleeping bags, but if it's you don't want to like a zero degree Kelty, they'll be heavy. You want a 25 degree Kelty. And not a 30 degree, that's a little bit too light. And you could look for and luck out and find some an enlightened equipment quilt. You're not likely to find that for for less than two hundred dollars. So there's your sleeping bags. And if part of the sleeping system, you need something between you and the ground. And this is a Thermarest Z-Rest. It weighs 10 ounces and costs 30 bucks. That's cheap. You can buy a better quality, a Thermarest uh, uh, regular blow-up air mattress, and you can spend 150 bucks on it. I took a, an expensive Thermarest air mattress on the Mir Trail a couple years ago, and after two weeks it went flat, and it was brand new. So uh, I tried to fix it, couldn't fix it. Ice cold water, you know, it's, it's hard to be in that ice cold water for long. You put it in water, under the water, try to find a bubble stream. Couldn't find it, froze my butt off. I slept on just the hard ground for a week. And then we got to Muir Trail Ranch and I bought this and it was, at Muir Trail Ranch it's expensive because they have to haul it in. If you bought it at, at, a, at a regular sporting goods store, it'd be 30 bucks. And uh, it is way better than nothing, it, but for me, my I, I need something where my hips and shoulders don't bottom out. I will spend 100 bucks and get an inflatable mattress. If you, but I'm, I'm 70 years old, so, so if you're younger and stronger and tougher, this might do very well. And if you look at pictures of PCT hikers, hiking the whole PCT, this is the product they use to sleep on. The third item of the big three is the, the tent. Um, in a lot, of, a lot of times and places, you don't need a tent. You can just sleep on the ground. It's not that big of a deal. It's a, a tent doesn't protect you from the bears. It protects you from the mosquitoes and the rain. If it's not raining and there's no mosquitoes, you don't really need a tent. The first time I did the Muir Trail, it was in 1971, and we didn't take tents. We, we, there were 12 of us, we had one tent. It was a two-man tent that uh, two, two, two guys used. Uh, the rest of us used tube tents, which are plastic tubes. If it rained, it was not a real comfortable situation, but it was better than nothing. And since then, I've used all kinds of tents, and I've fallen into liking tarp tents. Tarp tent being a company that makes single wall tents of various kinds. They have a real sweet spot in value and functionality. It has, their, their tents have a floor, they have mosquito netting all around, zippered doors, it's a full-on tent. It's, a lot of them are held up by hiking poles. That makes them a little bit lighter. And they weigh like a pound and a half or two pounds. However, my current favorite tent is even lighter. And that is just a tarp, an 8x10 tarp. Um, for your ultralight pack on a budget, an ultralight tarp is this 3F tarp made, well, it's made by 3F, sold on Amazon. It weighs 8.2 ounces, that's nothing, and costs $29. You can spend, literally, you can spend $600 on an ultralight tent. The tarp tents, which are way cheaper, but still totally functional, are $250. So, $25, bucks. that's a real significant part of saving weight. And I know, I, I had... I got, I got used to tents and I was kind of skeptical of only using a tarp for 
backpacking, but I've been using it for a couple years now, and it's great. You, you can see all around you. you. If it's raining, you lower the poles so it, the, the, there's no end coming out. There's no exposure at the gap. There's no gap at the edges. Um, <clears throat> you have a ton of room, and you have circulation, so you never have condensation problems. And all in all, especially by the weight and the price, a tarp is awesome. And I'm going to leave a, I'm going to show a quick video of the setup of my tarp. And uh, I assure you that this is not hard to do and you'd be very happy for the freedom. Okay, so I'm going to take these items and start filling up this uh, backpack. And when it gets all full of essential gear, we'll weigh it. And I'll give you the total price. Which I think is going to be around $400. Okay, there's the sleeping bag. I'll put this on last. Some other gear that you need, you need a cook set, or it could go without cooking, but hot food is awfully nice, and it's, it's a luxury, but it's, it's a luxury that's worth it. So this is, this is a cook set made by Trail Designs. It's called their Sidewinder Solo Stove, and it, they've made it to be an economical stove setup use, utilizing their magnificent caldera comb. So this is a rather inexpensive pot. If you wanted to get nice stuff, you could spend $50 on a titanium pot. And you could spend $50 on a Snow Peak propane stove. Or $50 on a MSR pocket rocket. Or you could do it this way. This whole kit, which includes the stove and, and a pot, $55. Bucks. It's pretty awesome. And it weighs 7.4 ounces. So in this pot cook set, it's a pot lifter, little tiny measuring cup, weighs nothing, a little bit of a sponge. Um, I have a lighter in here for, for lighting Esbit fuel. Esbit fuel is a dry, uh, flammable solid. This is not exactly a stove, but this is an Esbit stove. It's a little couple of pieces of titanium. It weighs like two grams. That is like half an ounce or something crazy like that. So you put a little, uh, you put your bit of this fuel on this thing and then you would, well, this is, this is what makes this better than other alcohol or esbit fuel stoves. This thing is awesome. You got your pot here. You spread this out, put your stove on, on uh, a non-combustible surface, you get your fuel in it. That's easily enough fuel for two or three cups to boil water. You light your stove, I'm not going to actually light it. I have a special lighter at the suggestion of Rand Lindsley of Trail Designs. He said... Get a windproof, get a windproof cigarette lighter, and that'll light your esbit. Just a match or a bic lighter, it's a little bit hard to light. So that thing is that lights it for sure. It's refillable. You assemble your pot first, have it sitting there, put your water in it. You light your esbit. Doesn't take much to light it. You uh, then put your pot with water on it. Got three cups of water there, two or three. When you're backpacking, you really, if you can cook, if you can boil two cups of water, that's pretty much all you need for backpacking and cooking. Six and a half minutes, and about half of one of these Esbit fuel tablets, you have boiling water. And compared to a jet boil, this is like three minutes slower compared to a propane fuel, also slower. Um, 
if you're using this in the winter, this works in the winter, whereas propane does not work in super cold temperatures. Gasoline works in cold temperatures, but so does this. This works in cold temperatures. I've had it down to minus 7 Fahrenheit. Alcohol works, and Esbit works. So there's your stove, and this costs 55 bucks. That is, that is worth buying, and uh, will add to the functionality and comfort of this whole arrangement. I also have a cook set. All I use is uh, plastic, plastic, and a plastic spoon. You can get these, get them at REI, but you can also get them, get something equivalent at a thrift store for a buck a piece. You know, it's, it's not like it's anything fancy. Now, I also have, this is a, an Osprey pack cover. I forget what it weighs, it's not too much, but you can also use a garbage bag, but if you use a garbage bag, you want to bring some little paper binder clips so you can clip it securely to your backpack. It works just fine. Very light, it's almost nothing. But I'll throw it in here for the weight. Nice big rubber bands helps to keep this thing contained. So the lid doesn't come off and everything float around. Okay, you gotta have a water bottle. That's it's really not uh, the full water bottle is not part of the of the pack of the base weight, but an empty water bottle is. I don't want to dump this water, but just believe me, this thing's pretty light. Just the container's very light, way lighter than an Nalgene. And you need a raincoat or a poncho or something. And something that's very economical and, and, and it totally works is frog togs. Frog tog raincoats, you want to get one that is coated nylon or ripstop nylon or something substantial, not plastic. It's going to be, going to be being, being rainproof and waterproof. It will have condensation as you hike. You just open it up and try to air it out as much as you can. Sometimes if you get an expensive Gore-Tex one, it's going to clog up. They call it wetting out. It'll wet out and you, you get condensation anyway. So, so coated nylon works just fine. And we have some stakes to go with the, use with the tent to hold, to hold, stake the tent out. And a water treatment system. I really like the VersaFlow. It's, this is the VersaFlow filter. It, it will filter like 10,000 gallons of water. It's pretty awesome. I've used it for a five day trip and I was, I was filtering water for like 10 people. And it, the flow never slowed down. It was awesome. And it comes with two, two, gap, two liter uh, bags, which they also don't weigh anything, which gives you the capacity to go to a dry camp or to uh, not run out of water. Or you can loan this to somebody else for their carrying. Now, I didn't, I didn't go into much food, I'm, I mean, I didn't go into much clothing, but I'll, I'll throw in this hat, but you would realize you're going to have certain clothing on your body. You've also got an insulating layer, like a, like a down puffy, or a, pull, a pile pullover, and you might have an extra under, pair of underwear and an extra t-shirt. Um, and you do need a hat for... for uh, sleeping and for cold weather and you probably need a baseball type hat or a broad brimmed hat for hiking in the sun. And part of your part of your tent operation is this polycryo uh, sleeping pad or a sli uh, ground mat. And what I did, you can get these for eight bucks a piece. You actually get two of them for eight bucks. And they weigh 
nothing. They like, there's 2.2 ounces. So what I did is I put, using Gorilla Tape, I put tabs on the corners with a grommet in them. That way I can st stretch it out and stake it down so it's very stable. You don't have to do that. You could use rocks. And that works just fine. But some kind of a ground cloth. This is another uh, Rand Lindsay suggestion, and it's lighter than Tyvek, which is another option. More durable than painter's drop cloth or something. And where you get that is Gossamer Gear, uh, and they make it in a size I already pre-cut to, to make two uh, ground pads. Some other things you would need, you would think about, well, you absolutely need a compass, but it doesn't have to be an expensive compass. And you can, you can get a compass for 10 bucks. You know, that's not a big deal. You might, this might be a lifesaver. This is mosquito netting. And something that, well, I'm gonna leave that for later. For a pillow, you have these stuff sacks. You stuff your, unused clothing into a stuff sack and use that as a pillow and that's all you need really you don't need anything else for a trowel you have to dig a hole six inches deep put your solid waste as in poop put that in the thing cover it up make it so that no one will ever know that there, there's been any disturbance there that you didn't leave a deposit there this little trowel it's the deuce 0.45 ounces. It's like 10 bucks, something like that. It's awesome. And I put that in an accessible pocket so I can get it during the day. I also have this in an accessible pocket, toilet paper, in case I need to use it during the day. And I, this only touches dirt, so it's not like it's uh, contaminated with the feces or something. I have more than one way to start a fire. I'll put these in a place where one of them at least will be guaranteed to not get wet. And I also have, you need, you need a flashlight, or if you're taking your cell phone, the cell phone has a flashlight built in. You wanna get the lightest possible with the, the smallest battery possible. And if you can get a light with, that runs on two triple A's, that's pretty light. <clears throat> you also need a first aid kit this is my first aid kit. It's pretty light. I talk about what's in it in another place. You might need a knife. I I carry a knife, a, a little block back folding knife. But you could also get a little tiny thing like this that is uh, it's made by Trail Designs. It's got it's just a little snip of a razor blade, which that's all you need to cut open packages. And you could probably clean a fish with that too. So the first aid kit, these are my meds, which is like, this is my drugstore. Um, Motrin, Advil, aspirin, vitamin C, whatever vitamins I'm taking, that's a separate little pack. And this is my toiletries, which are unavoidable. Toothbrush, comb, scissors, nail file, chapstick, uh, toothpaste, stuff like that. And I also bring, uh, there's a dental floss. I also bring a little stick of travel deodorant. And that's because I don't wanna, I don't wanna stink myself or my partners out in a tent or even on the trail. There's no benefit to being stinky. So just don't even, don't even do it. Other little things I have, this is not really essential. This is a, uh, this is a spot beacon. There are two-way communication devices around. They, they're not any heavier than this. Not really essential. We, we did so much backpacking in the old days with no rescue signaling device. I would call this non-essential, but in today's world, I would say, why not? It doesn't weigh that much. Your choice if you want it. Uh, of, other, of other necessities, I have Soap, which is hand soap. I have sunblock SPS 50. 
I have a little bit of hand sanitizer. I would take more for a like a 10 day trip. Every time you go to the bathroom, you clean your hands. Before you cook dinner, you clean your hands. And that's about it for the pack. So let's load this up and see what this thing weighs. I always put the spoon in the same place so that when I get to camp, I know exactly where it is. I keep it in the back pocket on the side here. That way I can find it. That pack weighs 11 pounds. I would pack it a little bit neater if it was a real trip. Plenty of room in a 45 liter bag. Um, now I would add uh, food, water, I've got the water right there, and, uh, and a little bit of clothing. You need a lot less clothing than you think. And uh, if, if it were a real backpack, which I'll, I'll take this backpack on a backpack this summer to the Wind Rivers, I would, I would trade out a few things. I would add a inflatable air mattress just for my comfort. It's going to weigh a little bit more than that foam, foam pad. And I would also bring a folding chair. Kind of, a, you, you don't think of a folding chair when you think of ultralight, but this thing weighs a pound. You get the cap and set this up, sit your butt in it and have some miso soup. It is so relaxing and restful that it is not an option, it is essential. Weighs a pound, this is about a pound. I would also bring a pillow. This is a climate pillow. There's all kinds of pillows, like Sea to Summit makes a great pillow. That just gives me a better, a better night's rest. And that little bit of comfort is worth it. And I would also bring this. There are other, this is a spot meter, but there are other devices around that do the same thing or more. They have two-way communication. Uh, kind of handy to have. I'd also bring a cell phone. I mean, how many years did we hike without cell phones? But it's a camera, it's a video camera, it's a flashlight, it's a GPS system. It's a notepad. It's very versatile. Um, I'll definitely take it. So this pack is 12 pounds. With all this stuff, it's, I mean, this is 11 pounds. With all this stuff, it's gonna be maybe 13. It's gonna be under 15 for sure. With food, the food is going to weigh two pounds per day, basically. If you have more than two pounds a day, you have too much food. And the water, you know, the water's pretty heavy. But you gotta, you got to have, where I hike, you generally never need more than one liter to carry. When you get to a water source, you drink your liter and refill it, and probably drink some more and refill it. You want to carry as much water as you can in your gut and a full liter for on the trail. So that is my budget ultralight backpack. It weighs 11 pounds, stripped down, very comfortable, uh, about as economical as I would recommend getting. This pack with all this gear in it costs about $300, but there's one more item which is essential enough to buy a brand new and that is trail shoes. And I have been so happy with Ultra Lone Peak shoes. This is my third pair, and I've, I've hiked the Camino in Spain, I've hiked the Mir Trail with them. Uh, this one, I hiked two Caminos in them last year, last summer. Uh, very comfortable, very light. You can get them for 80 bucks. If you have to spend 100, 120, it's worth it. Uh, I would definitely do this, and then this brings the price up to four hundred dollars, and that's uh, it's all stuff I would recommend. That, and if you buy just this, just this stuff, uh, you you won't be too unhappy. Go to my if you have any questions, go to my blog, which is backpackingtechnology.com. I'll put I'll put this video and the recommended equipment in a list with links to reviews of most of these things. So, Bob Shaver signing out. See you later. Bye.